data is stored in a variety of media types including disk, magnetic or optical, RAM, random access memory, and magnetic tape. When storing data on media, some considerations are the speed or transfer rate of the data being read, written, or accessed, storage capacity, and the cost per gigabyte of memory, and whether or not it's volatile or non-volatile, volatile meaning in memory or non-volatile meaning stored on disk. And the three most important types of media for databases are the RAM, a random access memory, also called main memory, which is the fastest, most expensive, and it has a smaller capacity and it's volatile. Whereas SSD is a solid state drive or flash memory that's fast, not too expensive, a little bit bigger in capacity than RAM, but it's non-volatile, which means it's stored on disk. And then HHD or hard disk drive or magnetic disk, it's slower, but it's a lot cheaper, has a much larger capacity, and it's also non-volatile, which is good. A sector is a physical track or slice on a disk that holds data, and it's typically 512 bytes per sector, or up to four kilobytes with newer disk formats. And data is grouped in pages with SSD flash memory, and it's typically between two to 16 kilobytes per page. A block is a uniform size of data that's used by both databases and file systems, and it's used when transferring data between main memory and storage media, and it's typically two to 64 kilobytes. There's two main types of databases when, it, when data is considered, and those are row and column oriented databases. Row databases are the ones that organize data by record, keeping all the data associated with the record next to each other in memory. And row-oriented databases are the most common way of organizing data quickly. In relational databases, like MySQL, commonly use row-oriented storage, and they're optimized for reading and writing rows efficiently. And there's column-oriented databases that organizes data by field, keeping all the data associated with the field next to each other in memory. And these are getting more and more popular, but not as popular as row-oriented because column-oriented databases provide some performance, performance advantages to querying data. And they're optimized for reading and computing on columns efficiently. Some examples of column-oriented databases are Redshift or Snowflake. A table structure is a scheme that organizes rows and blocks for storage. So besides row and column-oriented table structures, there are a few alternate table structures such as heap tables, sorted tables, hash tables, and even table clusters. A heap table is a table that's stored without any specific order imposed on the rows. When rows are inserted into a heap, there's no way to ensure that the data will be written or remain in the same order. Heaps can be used as staging tables for large unordered insert operations because data is inserted without enforcing a strict order, and the insert operation is pretty fast. Sorted table is a table sorted by a specific column, typically the primary key column, which determines the row order. And the table's rows are assigned to blocks based on the value of the sort column. Each block contains a range of sorted rows based on the columns they're sorted by. Using sorted tables are great for queries that read in the data in order of the column that is sorted by. Then there's hash tables which is a table where the rows are assigned to buckets. Um, buckets are blocks that contain the rows, and each bucket starts with one block, and then as the table grows, buckets fill up and with rows, and the new blocks are allocated by the database or linked to the initial block, creating a chain of linked blocks. And the bucket containing each row is identified as the hash function. And a hash key is typically the primary key or another column or even a group of columns. The hash function uses the hash key to compute which bucket contains the row. And finally, a table cluster interleaves rows with two or more tables in the same storage area. The cluster key is a column that is available to all interleaved tables and it determines the row order in which they're interleaved. Rows within the same cluster key value are stored together and the cluster key is typically the primary key of one table and the corresponding foreign key of another table.